make a wish in all of our wish kits. So for those of you that don't know, World Wish Day was celebrated, is always celebrated on April 29th. And it's the day that the wish that inspired the founding of Make-A-Wish started. Uh, the first wish was actually granted to Chris Gracious, a seven-year-old boy who at the time had uh, leukemia, a type of leukemia that uh, we know so much more about now that most kids um, do quite well with. Chris's wish was very simple. He wanted to be a uh, Arizona state trooper. And the Phoenix community came together to make it happen. He rode in the uh, Arizona State Police uh, helicopter. I think Chris must have had a little bit of a devilish instinct in him too, because there are pictures of him ticketing his uh, neighbor's uh, parking tickets. Uh, so I love that. And his mother who helped her friend his wish, Linda Pauling, realized that it was an incredibly powerful wish for her own son and that other kids with critical illnesses ought to have wishes just like this. So Linda, years ago, gathered friends and they emptied their wallets and their pockets, came up with about 50 bucks to open a bank account so they could start accepting donations and grant more wishes. And so thanks to Linda and to the other founders today, Chris's wish became a movement that's transformed millions of lives. And lives like my dear friend, Apu, our 10 year old wish kiddo and special guest who I'm gonna bring on in just a minute. Before I do, very quickly, uh, several of you um, are winners of our signed books. So from our registered guest, uh, I've got Apu's book going to Cameron Lunn and also to actually a friend, dear friend and former colleague, Gwen Lennox. So Gwen, maybe I'll hand deliver that to you. Um, and we also have Kelly Corrigan's wonderful new uh, children's book. Uh, and one winner of that is going to Sharon Yim Leos. And I hope I didn't mispronounce your name. Congratulations. And if you're not logged on yet, it's okay, we'll email you. And we have more choices for you to win signed books. If you comment or send a question for Apu uh, via our chat on YouTube Live, we'll enter you in a drawing for more copies of these fabulous books. And if you aren't signed into YouTube, but you wanna send us a question in advance, please email it to my colleague, Ben Fetter at B-F-E-D-E-R at sf.wish.org. Okay, let's get to the fun part of this though. Let me introduce you to the fabulous Apu. She's 10 years old, as I said, went through a bout with leukemia. Um, Apu um, is a, an author, but she also is an avid reader. Uh, writer and she loves to draw. And her wish was to be a children's book author. And her book entitled Johnny's Big Moment, you're gonna hear more about. I do wanna recognize everybody who helped us make this wish happen. And this is how we do it at Make-A-Wish, it takes a lot of hands. So production support for her book was provided by Chronicle Books, LLC. And her wish was adopted by our good friends at Bristol Myers Squibb. Um, and thanks to anybody who might be signed on from Chronicle or from Bristol Myers Squibb um, for making this happen. So when Apu first imagined her wish, she dreamed of sharing her book with other kids facing their own illnesses and other hard times. And then we had this thing called the pandemic. Um, and we couldn't safely do that in person. And in fact, it took us a while to get those books uh, because there's such a backlog in shipping channels that those books didn't get shipped to us for quite a while. So this is a little delay, but I'm glad that we're finally able to introduce you to Apu and have her share with you a bit more about her book. So Apu, I wanna thank you for sharing your book with us today. I also wanna thank my friend, Kelly Corrigan, the wonderful Kelly Corrigan, who spent some time with Apu and also our other wish kid, Nirav, who's working on his own book. Um, for the Authors Roundtable, we taped their um, conversation a couple of weeks ago. So uh, let me do this, but first uh, start with Apu, why don't you take it away? Thank you. Sorry, I might be having some internet issues. But yeah, hello everybody. My name is Apu and I'm 10 years old and I'm a wish kid. Um, my wish was to be a children's book author, and I'd love to thank Make-A-Wish for making that come. And I wanted to share it with kids who are going through a tough time. So Make-A-Wish helped me make this event. A couple of weeks ago, I met the author Kelly Corrigan and another wish kid, and Kelly gave both of us some great advice. 
I met the wish kid Narav, who's making his own mystery novel, and it was so much fun. So right now we're going to watch the author's roundtable, and then you can join me for the reading and the Q&A. Make-A-Wish like always does like the coolest things. It's a blessing to me. It's really, it's it's just, it let, it's, it's letting me do what my dreams are. I've written four books and they're all true. So I haven't written any fiction. The first set of books have been so fun to write. And the most fun part for me is sharing. What's your title, Nara? Mine is called Wild Card. It's a mystery novel, which I've written like 40 pages so far. That's amazing. 40 pages is a lot of pages. Yeah. There's a kid and he lives with this ape who knows sign language uh-huh and, and i love it already so like he goes he finds a way to get into school like without having parents because like he <laughs> doesn't know much about his parents then he finds like a kid detective and the kid and somebody asks him to find like a missing a, a missing kid so there's like a group of different people who made friends and they're all trying to like find out what happened so it's like adventure and it's also a mystery and a different thing. How does the ape who does sign language figure into it? Uh, well, the ape is like um, the main character who's Silvis, who's the boy without parents. Um, the ape is like, um, he takes care of the ape and the ape is also very naughty. That's cool. And Apu, tell me about your book. Um, my book is about a boy and it's he's really scared and shy and um he's not like other people he's really different and then there's this new kid who's really popular um suddenly and and he, but she like there's a secret about her and so it's about how they become friends and she helps him overcome his fears hmm. i actually finished my book so yeah, for Christmas, my present was my Make-A-Wish book. So you had it printed up and you gave it to people? I actually just got the book. So Oh, it's amazing. Yeah. Wow, look at the cover. I love it. Thank you. Donnie's big moment. Yeah. yeah, it's really cool. Did they tell you that I have a kid's book coming out? I've never written a children's book, like an illustrated children's book. Oh, yeah, I heard about your book, Hello World, but I didn't know what it was about. Yeah, Yeah. it's about asking questions. Oh. Yeah. Christy, have you ever heard of that book by Dr. Seuss, Oh, The Places You Will Go? I was sort of questioning in my book because I was thinking it's more, Oh, The People You Will Know. Because that's what's mattered to me the most in terms of feeling happy and feeling productive and feeling like I have ways I can contribute. So that's what Hello World's really about is it's all about the people, but how will you know them? You'll ask questions. So it's just all these different questions that you could ask a person. Oh, I had a question. Has it come out yet? Because I would love to read it one day. I would love for you to read it. It comes out on April 20th. So what part of writing do you like? Like, do you like talking about the setting? Do you like, like playing out action? Do you like dialogue? I usually like, like showing the action, like what happened, but I also like adding dialogue. So like the reader can understand what's happening and um, understand like um, the character's thoughts and feelings. Yeah, I love dialogue. I love reading dialogue. Like I've noticed myself as a fiction reader that I can't, I feel so impatient in the early pages. I just want to hear people talk because I feel like it's so telling. Dialogue is something I like the most. And I also like description about where the person is so I know what is happening around them. I mean, I sort of feel like sometimes that if you build the scene correctly, and thoroughly and the reader really starts to believe that it's 
true, even though they know that it's not true, even though they know it's just a made up story, which is so cool, isn't it? Isn't that like a weird thing about reading and writing that you're yeah. just making things yeah. up and that you, but you have it like I have real emotions when I'm reading made up stories. Like I cry, I laugh, I'm mad, I'm stressed out. I want somebody to get in trouble or get caught. Like, yeah, sometimes I up. like, I was just reading and then sometimes I feel like, um, I feel like so into the book. I'm like, why doesn't this happen? Why yeah. doesn't this happen here? And yeah, there? sometimes for me too, like when I'm like really into the book, like sometimes I disagree with like something that happened. I was like, that shouldn't have happened. Like that doesn't seem as interesting to me. Or sometimes I really agree. I was like, oh yeah, that's really cool. And sometimes like, um, when I was in third grade, my, as my teacher said, it's called being in the zone. Like when you like are really interested in the book, like, so like you feel like you're in the book or like what's happening is real, is really, is really happening. And you really have like feelings of what's going on. It's interesting that idea about being in the zone and like falling into the book. But the other thing that's interesting that you said is about disagreeing with the author. And you both said it, Apu, you said like, why is that happening? It shouldn't be like that. And that is really thinking like a writer. Like whenever I'm reading, unless it's so good that, that I, I, I lose track of myself entirely, like I almost don't even exist. I'm just inside this made up world. I am, I do have like a little third eye kind of looking at the story like a writer would and deciding, do I think that was the best move? Do I think he should have bumped into her in the hallway like that? Do I think the teacher should have yelled at them? Do I think that the, that he should have forgotten his backpack there? Like, and that, all that work that you're doing intellectually in your mind when you're reading will totally, totally help you be a better writer. So um, why did you become an author and how did your career start? I always wanted to be a writer since I was your age, just like you. Then I tried to write a book in my 20s and I worked on it like that for a little while, but I had a day job and I just kind of petered out and I couldn't convince myself that it would really ever happen. So then it started to seem kind of silly. And then I was... Um, I had, was just gotten married and I had two kids and I found a lump and I got diagnosed with cancer and I was in chemotherapy. And then right after I started chemotherapy, my dad started chemotherapy. And I really, really loved my dad. He was like the best person I ever knew. That must and, be very hard. Yeah. So then I wrote that story of my dad and I being sick at the same time. And that's the story that became the first book. And that, oh, and that, so that's how I really got going. How's your health right now? Right now, I'm doing good. I've, it's been like a couple of uh, years since I had um, my treatment ended. And so I'm doing really good. I'm back to school, like, of course, like online school. How about you, Nirav? How is your health? Oh, I'm doing fine. Um, my treatment ended in um, early November and I'm feeling much better now. Um, my hair is all back because my hair fell off after chemo, but it's re it recently grew back like a few months ago. Congratulations, Nara, for finishing your treatment. Yeah, oh, thanks. Yeah, boy, I bet that feels good. Do you have like any extra tips on how like to be a good author? Do what you like doing. Do not make yourself do things just as an exercise, just because someone else suggested that maybe you should do it that way. Like follow the thing that you actually like that makes you want to write. Yeah, like even if you're not very good at it yet or like uh, think yes. you can do better, you should still, yes. still do it. Don't give up. hundred percent. Don't panic and switch gears and try writing a different thing or a different way. Like just stick with it. Like follow your heart, basically. Yeah. Um, I love talking to you guys. You're so smart. Thank you for your wisdom. Oh, thank you for yours. Thank you for yours. Come on. Thanks for the advice.
Okay, so hope you enjoyed the video. Okay, so now I'm going to read my book. Um, once upon a time, I learned that I like to rhyme. So I made up a little tale about a boy slow as a snail. The boy's name is Johnny, and I hope you find a story funny. So over here, there's like a picture of Johnny as a snail. Um, of course, he's not actually a snail. It's just um, because of the rhyme. <laughs> Johnny was a little prankster. He loved to dress as a scary monster. He loved to play silly games like making up crazy names. So the picture is like he's dressing up as a scary monster and he loves to play like pretend and play. While he was naughty and happy at home, at school, Johnny found himself all alone. He had no friends to say hello or to play catch and throw. This made Johnny very shy. He had no friends to say goodbye. So over here, Johnny's kind of left out while everybody else is playing basketball without him. Poor Johnny was a wee bit slow. He could not keep up with his workflow. He was also shorter than the rest and teasing made every day a test. So Johnny actually is like the smallest um, person in his class. Others kind of look like high schoolers. <laughs> I'm not sure. But he's really dif different and he's slow. He can't really keep up with everybody else. Johnny was so very shy. He would never even try to join in, walk or talk with the kids in his block. So over here, Johnny is actually like thinking, please wait for me while everybody else is like playing with their friends. One day he met a girl named Jackie who loved to play soccer and hockey. She was very good at school and many thought she was cool. She found it easy to make new friends and liked to set bold new trends. So this is the new girl, Jackie, and like less than one day, she's like really popular and everybody's like saying, you're awesome, you're super and like giving all like all of these awesome compliments. Whenever Johnny saw Jackie, he thought she was so lucky. She seemed to be having so much fun running and playing in the sun. She seemed to be so very happy and never said anything snappy. So right now, I think Johnny's like thinking, wow, you're so lucky. And like, Johnny's like kind of maybe even jealous. And well, like she's, he's looking at Jackie, like being awesome and everything. Johnny thought Jackie was good at everything and that she could do just about anything. Until one day, Jackie gave a ball a kick and Johnny saw that her leg was robotic. She had less to... I mean, she had lost her leg as a real little kid, and yet she stayed drawn. Yes, she did. Like Johnny, she was not the same, yet nothing was going to stop her game. Sorry, that was kind of a tongue twister. So this is when Johnny finds out that Jackie's not perfect. She actually had a problem, and she lost her leg as a little kid, and she got a robotic leg. But still, Jackie tried to stay happy and strong even with her problems. Jackie said, things may be hard, but never give up. If you face a bully, be brave and stand up. If things go wrong, say, oh, well, and move on. Be proud of who you are and keep marching on. So over here, Jackie and Johnny become friends and they're like saying, yay, let's have fun. And then they're just trying to like, you know, let go and be happy. You can do it, yes you can. Face your fears and stick to the plan. Simply enjoy and try your best. Don't worry about all the rest. I kind of like sing that like a song. So over here, um, Johnny 
kind of feels a bit more braver than what he was before. And now um, Jackie's kind of helping him understand that, yeah, be yourself. And now she's giving him like a thumbs up. <laughs> Johnny cheered up. He felt better. He also felt so much lighter. The road ahead seemed brighter. He was not giving up. He was a fighter. So over here, Johnny's kind of, now that he's like, he feels like himself, he's now become like a hero. That's Johnny, like the silhouette, um, oh, like behind, like the sun is behind him. And he feels so much more happier. And yeah. Um, so this is a little rhyme about myself. Could I just say that <laughs> quickly? Um, okay, about the artist. Hi, my name is Apu and you can see what I've been up to. I'm eight years old. I'm often shy, but sometimes bold. The eight years was from two years ago. I like drawing and baking, building Legos and playing, and I really wish no one got cancer and scientists could find a cure and an answer. I wanted to write this book to help sick kids have a positive outlook. And I'd like to thank everyone at Make-A-Wish for creating awesome memories that kids cherish. Thanks to my doctors and nurses for helping me recover from my bruises. And thanks to Sharon Bridges for helping me with these verses. Finally, thanks to my teachers, friends, and family for believing in me and helping joyfully. So thank you for reading and I mean, listening to the reading. Wow, Apu, you know what? I've heard you read once before and it gets better every time. And I feel so inspired by Johnny and, and the story and the friendship that transpires. So thank you for that. That was awesome. Thank you. Absolutely awesome. Did a beautiful job reading too. Um, so we have a number of questions. Is it okay if I ask you a few, get us started? Sure. Okay, so first we've had two people actually ask the same question, which is, how long did it take you to write and illustrate and work on the book? Um, it took some time, but it was easier because I had an author help me, Sharon Bridges. For writing and like the illustrations, it took maybe a couple of months, I think. I don't really remember clearly, but I think like maybe, yeah, about a couple months. I love it. And somebody asked, somebody else asked, you know, what was your inspiration for the book? And did you have other ideas for it? Um, I don't, uh, like the inspiration, I kind of wanted to do something that kind of like, also I kind of based some stuff on my own life. Mm -hmm. I got in for it, I'm sorry, um, I'm losing my words. I got inspiration from like things and events around me that happened and also maybe about what I've heard or seen happening. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, I think that's mostly where I got my inf inspiration from. Okay, good. That's great. Um, do you think you're going to write any more books? I'm not sure now because I do have homework and like school. <laughs> So maybe in summer, summer's coming in two months, um, but I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, of course, you got some good tips from Kelly earlier about, yeah. you know, keep trying. I loved what she was saying to both you and Nira, right? Like, you know, it's 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 a question of work and things, which clearly came through with that. Totally. Yeah. Uh, what about advice for other young authors? I mean, you you know, you actually, you, you, you I would love to tell you, um, Congratulated Nirav on uh, getting through his treatment because you've been through that. That's a lot, right? So I thought that was just, that uh, warmed my heart. But what, off, what, what, what about advice you would have given to Nirav or to other folks that are um, starting out? Um, as an author or like just in treatment? As an author, but if you have other advice too, you've been through a lot actually, right? For 10 years. I'm not a professional author at all. <laughs> Kelly will probably have better advice, but um, if you are to do it, just have fun. Don't really plan and don't think it's something that you have, like, you, it's like pressure. It's just have fun and take it one step at a time, I think, because that's what I did. 
I think that's great. And can I ask you a question just about um, your wish sort of during your treatment, right? Because you started this when you were going through treatment or you heard about it. Can you tell us yeah. a little bit about that? How'd that feel? Um, it was it was such a great feeling because um, I was actually getting my wish come true and I really wanted to make a book. Um, I did start it like kind of during my treatment and it felt so like, like encouraging. It felt like I had something to look forward to and, and I could also help others. It was, it was just something that made the pain and all the hardship go faster. And it was just amazing. I love it. I love it. Uh, I also love it. Are you wearing a sweatshirt or a t-shirt that says something like keep shining? Keep shining and smiling. See, I think that you've got something inherent in you, Apu, that is coming out, whether it's in your writing or your speaking or just being with us. In yeah, fact, you don't think you stop smiling the whole time we've been on this, right? <laughs> Gotta put my smile. I love it. I absolutely love it. Well, I guess any other, I guess one other question that I might say is, um, because I think many of us like to hear from our favorite authors and then kind of get inside and say, so what else, are you, what else are you thinking about? So what are you reading? Who's your, do you have a favorite author or book you're reading currently you love? So um, I have like, there's never one author I can choose because I'm always reading like new books, but um, like, for example, one like a couple of authors that I've always loved is like J.K. Rowling, Harry Potter, the uh, author of that, Percy Jackson, Rick Riordan, and like a comic book is like Jeff Kinney for Die with the Wimpy Kid. Those, oh, I love like, those. those three books, um, of course, I have more, but like those three authors and like their books kind of stood out to me and I've loved them like until now. I love that. And so you, so you're one of those people that you have several different books going on at the same time. You might have a Percy Jackson, but because the diary of the yeah. women can go pretty quickly too. I know. I just, so. yeah, I actually just finished Percy Jackson, like in in like this um, pandemic, and it was awesome. And like even Harry Potter, I had I re read it again, and it was it was really good. Yeah, that, you know, I think that's one of the pluses of the pandemic, right? We all have a little bit more time. We're not driving around everywhere. So we have time to pick up yeah. a great book or share that. So I love it. I love it. Well, I do know that we got you out of school a little bit early and you probably have home, but I'm not, before I let you go, anything else you'd like to share with the audience? Anything else you'd like to say on World Wish Day or uh, anything that we all ought to keep in mind as we go through, go forward? I think we ju we just should like stay happy, have happy thoughts and continue to help others since it is a hard time and we should all stay happy and have fun. I think that's awesome. Uh, and I gather that your uh, co-interviewer or co-discusser uh, on the Rothers Roundtable, Nirav, is actually on watching too. So I think we both can say hi to Nirav and thank you also for his participation. That was an awesome, awesome thing that he shared too. So, yeah. well, thank you very much. Um, and uh, tell your teacher, we said thank you for letting you uh, get out a little early to join all of us this afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> for an after school break. And I can't think of a better way to celebrate World Wish Day. So yeah. thank you. Thank you, Make-A-Wish and everything you do for everybody, including me. Well, we love it. And you can help us with another, a wish coming up. How about that? I want to. Do, I was like, I'm going to become a Make-A-Wish employee when I grow up. Yeah. Well, in the meantime, you can join our youth board when you get a little older. You can be a volunteer. Uh, you can start actually a wish, uh, you know, a Kids for Wish Kids Club at your school at some point if you want. Wow. I didn't know yeah. I could do that. You can do that. We'll talk. What you know? What we'll talk offline. And if anybody online wants to learn more about ways that you can have fun and do fun Make a Wish things, just let us know. We'd love the help. <laughs> takes takes a lot of hands to make a wish come true. Okay. Good to see you, my friend. We'll see you at the next event. Happy reading, everybody. Have a great afternoon and happy World Wish Day. Happy World Wish Day. See ya. Bye.